Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nest Tree Tribe. And we are here with the really amazing squirrel family that we have managed to build with Isqui, daughter of Squee. And she has done such an amazing job giving birth to healthy son after healthy son. And she has also picked an amazing tree. So there were two trees that we were going to have the sisters pick from. We have Isqui, and then we had her sister Sisivana. And Sisivana actually picked a tree that so far has not been very productive. It does not have very many food sources beyond the tree. It does not have very many ways of her to gather up enough grass. She's not even capable because she has absolutely no attack ability of gathering up any grass to help her build a nest, but she has won the love of Tuvan. So Tuvan is still staying close by and he is very loyal to his not yet quite mate, but definitely in love with Sisivana. And they're trying desperately to build a nest, but it's like every single time we finally have an opportunity and finally have a chance to make headway towards getting enough grass for them to build their own nest, something else happens. Like the fact that the nest under the main nest tree is now damaged. And so Anakui, who wandered away a long time ago and just came back to take over the main nest tree, having found out that her mother and the other nest sharer her mother was sharing the nest with, Lily Sa, uh, have both passed away. Well, she came over here expecting to be able to go ahead and give birth to her brand new baby, take over the main nest tree, and turns out that's going to be a lot harder said than done because the nest is damaged. And we don't have enough grass just yet, though she has grass right behind her to try to fix it. So it's going to be interesting to see if Anakui is going to be able to repair this nest in time. I'm not sure. I, I, I kind of wonder if you only have like a day to fix it and then we're in trouble there. But she is actually expecting Tuvan's child because Tuvan, I did want to pass on his genetics even if he and Sisiana aren't able to have a child child. So Anakui hunted out the first available male and managed to convince him to breed with her. So we'll have to see what kind of child they're going to have together. Other than that, we do have some adorable adventurers like little Secro, who has done a loyal job for the family by diving deep into the unexplored territory, trying to search out other resources that he can possibly share with them. His younger brother, Sukir, is actually on his way to do the exact same thing, so it'll be interesting to see how many resources those two find far over there on the other side of the island. And then over here, we do have our nest weavers expanding their family. And I really love this group. They are probably the nicest and most cooperative of all of the creatures that have been born on the island so far. We have Isri, who is our traditional midwife and nest weaver, finally having children of her own, with little Isako, who happens to be a pretty good digger, so I'm pretty excited because she is going to be a wonderful midwife and nest weaver with the white ram horns and digging ability of her mother. And uh, Vanku, who has really fallen in love with Isri, so I'm excited to see what their family is going to look like, especially with little Coco Co who is the adoptive daughter of Isri, uh, still helping out as she can, even though she has blind eyes, a no paw, double immunity, and hemophilia. <laughs> She's still trying to help out by gathering up the berries to offer to her mother and her younger sibling. So it, that's really fun. And she's not blood related to these two. She was just adopted because she was the very first birth that Isri ever saw. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and settle in to see what kind of baby Isri is about to give birth to. Oh, look at those ears! Isri! Isri, you've had such a precious little one! Oh my gosh! So this is a little Resi. So a little Resi with white, uh, white horns. White ram horns, or antlers, horns. And, oh my gosh, I can't even speak white ram horns. <laughs> She's just got those ears. They're so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, so she has she has hearing. She does not have a no paw, thank goodness. Um, she has collecting. She has strength. Uh, so she's going to have at least three, four strength. Pretty strong. Pretty strong for one of their children. Um, she does not have digger's paw, so she won't be able to dig up roots the way that her sister and her mother are able to. I'm actually going to send Izanako uh, maybe over here to try to use her digger's paw as she ages up and have plenty of room to kind of roam for that. Uh, Sienna is actually wandering. I'm going to send Sienna on her way over to where all of the action is happening with our squirrel sons over here. 
Oh my goodness. What a cute little baby. I'm going to scooch Isri over here and she'll immediately gather up some roots to be able to weave and make sure the nest is okay. I like to imagine she digs up really nice smelling roots or like little medical roots to be able to weave into the nest and make sure that the babies are going to be nice and healthy and the mother is happy. So those are the lessons that she's teaching to all of her white ram horned daughters and all of the children that she's had so far. Kokoko is going to grab, gather up those berries to help out. I'm going to have Vanku step up to mate with Isri again so that we don't lose out on any of their amazing white ram horned children because wow that's so cute those ears are so cute I'm really happy about that all right and then meanwhile over here Anakui is going to gather up that uh big giant pile of yeah, she's going to gather up that big giant pile of grass right there. Just enough grass to repair things. And she is going to have Lakir help her repair it. So just in time, right before that thing falls apart. And Lakir may actually be a good possible future mate for her. They could have some pretty interesting children together. But I think Kui is actually the one who's going to steal her heart. Because he is extremely handsome and he has F and G immunity. And she has A and B immunity. We just have to be careful because they have a chance of having a blind child and he does have no paw and I do not want to pass that on but I really love his look and I think Lakir because he shares genetics with her I may send Lakir elsewhere so that we can try to spread his genes uh, somewhere else if we decide to breed him because we are trying to get rid of no paw all right but really we should just relax and have some fun and just see what the heck happens because this may be closing in we'll probably play with the nest trees in the future but I should be home today actually um from my trip to Hawaii and that that means come here little Daku we might have to see the nest trees kind of take a moment to rest and relax and we'll come visit them again in the future because we'll have the big gigantic jungle update to play with tomorrow so I'm pretty excited about that uh, or actually I think it'll be the day after tomorrow cuz yeah I'll be home tomorrow <laughs> I'll be home tomorrow so don't worry you guys I'll be there soon all right little new can actually start coming over and he can gather up not only the nuts but he can do some digging for some roots like a proper squirrel. I love the squirrely side of our family. It's really turning out quite interesting. And then Anara can come on down and she can actually collect up these clam shells and maybe possibly manage to convince uh, either Rovan or Nuqui. I think it would be Nuqui because Rovan also has a no paw to be uh, be her mate. So I was really worried that Anara would never find anyone to be able to mate with. But then uh, Isqui went and had all of these beautiful squirrely baby boys. So so let's go ahead and have Rovan gather up some of those berries. He's going to be one of our main berry gatherers. His father, oh, dang it, we're going to lose Tavon. Today is Tavon's last day alive, so I'm going to let him eat all the berries he wants. And then Takui is going to continue helping his sister clear out this area and kind of make it safe for all of her children to grow up in. Takui also has really beautiful appearance and he's very healthy other than the fact he's kind of carrying hemophilia around. So I might have to consider who he could possibly breed with um, to try to pass on some of his looks because he is very handsome actually. <laughs> I really I don't have time for looks. I have to get rid of no paw. Gotta focus. Gotta focus. No paw really weakens you. All right, let's oh, yes Oh, and what's this? We've got some bunnies getting awful close and we can't do anything about it. Secro Secro you don't have the ability to eat bunnies He's just too peaceful. He's just a wonderful peaceful little explorer you guys and the grass has grown back over here so I'm going to have Tuvan gather up as much of the grass as he can and again there's some irony in the fact that Sisivana if she really wanted to be able to have children of her own she can't even make her own nest so Tuvan ends up having to pull all of the weight of trying to collect up enough nesting material though we finally found a spot that has quite a bit of it in order to build the nest all on his own and that may be why this is a genetic dead end and they don't end up having children they just didn't have the resources needed to gather up that nesting material so let's see we have one mama on the nest we have two mamas on the nest so let's go ahead and see where sisters Isqui and Anakui end up having their children so I think both I think there was no paw in both of the possible males we ended up mating together oh and I need to move this guy there you go and both of the males we ended up mating together so I'm going to leave the mutation menu on digging paw and claw and see what happens so Iskri welcome in Tuvan Tavan's last children child oh, sorry guys and then Anakui welcome in your very first born child so let's go ahead and see 
what they're going to be. Oh my gosh, it's a panda. <laughs> we have returned to the traditional squirrely look over here all of a sudden. Out of the blue comes a panda. Oh my gosh. So a new Kunu. Uh, he happens to be healthy. He has panda pattern. C and B immunity. Um, he's got digging paw and he's got collecting and cracker jaw. He has a return to like the traditional squirrel look and he's even... He's even got lean body or normal body. He looks like he has lean body with that look. Oh my gosh. All right. What are we going to name you, little one? Um, Nuqui? I think we have a Nuqui already. Lakir is kind of hanging around. I'm going to have to figure out what to name him. But I think your mom is quite proud of you, little guy. He's really cute. I'm going to leave his name Nukunu for just a second. He is Tuvan's child. So we'll go with um, uh, Tu Nu Q. Too new Q. That's a really weird name, but the, it kind of goes with the squirrely cues that we've been adding in. So he's interesting. Definitely, definitely reminds me a lot of. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I can find her. Squee. He definitely reminds me a lot of Squee. So too new Q. You look like you, you don't really look a lot like your your grandmother, but I can see a lot of the like squirrely behavior and the the traditional like little almost panda-y squirrely look right there so hmm all right and look here i'm gonna go ahead and move you over a bit and then i think cooey would be able to gather up uh some of these some of these nuts and kind of convince kind of convince anakui of how handsome he is because i think Tui is actually quite stunning so anakui may not be making the best decisions genetically for the future of her children but i think that she definitely would fall for cooey all right and then over here let me go ahead Continue doing a little bit of exploring with this guy. Oh, there's another berry bush. There's some more of the grass that we could gather up to make a new nest. Um, and then we'll have her gather up these nuts right here, and she'll just continue working on that. And I think Tuvan is going to work his way over to this grass. He's really desperately trying to build a nest in time. We'll have to see if he's going to be able to do it. And then I think I'll have Rothu start exploring, because I feel like... That grass is not really growing back very quickly. So we'll have him start exploring. Aha! Uh -huh. This grass just grew back, so Ravan can help out there. And then what kind of baby did his mom have? Another boy! <laughs> oh my gosh, Dooku! Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so um, Pavan had all boys. He had one, two, three, four boys. Oh my gosh, look at that! Look at that! I can't believe he had so many boys! That's just amazing. He had five boys. Oh my gosh. So Isqui has definitely done her um, done her duty in helping to bring in a beautiful squirrely family. And she has had all beautiful squirrely sons. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with all of her beautiful squirrely sons now. Other than the fact that I really feel like Nukui is going to be taking over taking over the nest as soon as he's old enough and sharing it with Anara. And I think Anara is just the best and only female. We're starting to actually get very male heavy in which creatures we have. So I think Anara and Nukui actually are a really good choice for our little squirrely, squirrely children to be born here. I'm actually most interested to see what's going on at this nest now. All right, and then we also have Dooku right over here who's got the most amazing attack he is so fantastic and he doesn't have the ability to collect any nuts so i don't think he would be very interested in sticking around here and i may send him off exploring so that he can go and pick a fight i think he wants to go find some of those like rumored predators that he was raised being warned of used to lurk this land and i think that little dooku here wants to go pick a fight so we're gonna leave him alone to, to pick a fight and we're going to harvest up some of that grass. I think I saw, yep, the nest down here, just as I get ready to make another new nest. The nest down here is once again in need of repair and Isri is the nest weaver, so that would definitely be something she'd take good care of. And then Sienna was on her way to be a potential mate way over here. So she's gonna keep moving. Kokoko is going to gather up what berries she can. Vanku, this is going to possibly be Isri's last child. So Vanku is going to stick around near his mate, I think, and his children. So I'll have him move up here and help out with the berries. And then Izako can actually come over here and start gathering up roots to help to weave into the nest for her mother's birth. So, or her, her mother about to give birth, I should say. All right, and then we've got all this rustling going on over with Seacrow. Dang it, and we're about to lose Seacrow too. 
Okay, so who's on the nest and ready to give birth? That would be our nest weaver is three. So let's settle in with her. <gasps> Look at the little boy! Oh, I love this family. I love the nest weavers and all of their beautiful white ram horns. Okay, so where's your father? Vanku's hanging out over here. So I think I'm gonna name him uh, Taku. There we go. Little Taku with those big giant ears again. That's just the best. I love it. I absolutely love it. So he has got CNA immunity. He's very attractive. I think I need to find, do I have like an extra female I can send down? Um, gosh, we really are getting very male heavy actually. Oh, and hello there. Can I attack that guy? I sure can. All right, come here little bun bun. There we go, just snagged some bunnies. But now that I look around, we actually are super heavy on the, the males we have versus females. And that happened just kind of out of the blue. So interesting. I would love to invite, um, I would love to invite a lovely female down to take Taku as a mate because he's very healthy, normal blood clotting, normal eyesight. He doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have no paw. He has the very attractive C immunity, which is not too common in our tribe. Green and blue eyes, but, and big, beautiful ears. <laughs> but we're gonna have to see if there's any females who will be born who would be good mates. Um, okay, so Taku, yeah, he's a little bit closely related to, uh, Siana. Well, not closely related, but they like share an immunity gene. So I don't know, Sienna. Should I have you go over there or should I have you stick around? Um, what are your abilities? She can do a little bit of collecting. Uh, I may have Sienna stick a little bit closer than I thought at first, just in case. I'm gonna let Kokoko gather up. Oh, Kokoko is gonna pass away the same day her adoptive mother Izri dies. So I, I'm not Taku. This isn't a slight against you. I just think that Izri and Kokoko need to nuzzle one another, and they need to be together in their final moments, which is really sad. So I'm gonna have them stay over here together. And is Akko needs a mate at some point. She has A and B immunity. Um, I may send over some of our some of our males. Actually, hey, hey, G and B, Dooku, uh, maybe or maybe F and B. Uh, or over here we have oh Isqui is about to pass away. Her brand new son, G and A. Hmm, hmm, Dooku. Hmm, I really love your attack. That's so awesome. I think I may send Dooku. What does he happen to have? Yeah, I'll send Dooku over. I'm actually gonna have like sassy little Dooku start working his way over to all of those lovely females who are peaceful nest weavers down here. And maybe Dooku can find a little bit of romance over there. And then Rotu, who was a wandering male when he started joining us, uh, is still wandering once more. Just kind of moving around. Uh, his children are all grown. His mate has passed away. Trying to figure out what to do with himself. Isqui's mate has passed away, but she is still very much in charge large and in charge of her awesome nest. She just lucked out so much at picking the right nest, even with one no paw holding her back. She has managed to pick a nest and have very, very healthy sons who will be able to lead quite the interesting legacy. So little Nuta does have digging paw, so he'll be able to dig things even if he isn't able to gather up the nuts. But over here, Nakui and the Nara, oh, they're finally old enough to have babies together, so I think they're going to. So let's go ahead. We we learn not to waste time with an effective nest. Oh my gosh, if there's an available nest, you want to make sure you utilize it. So Nyukui is going to gather up a, a couple berries and offer them to Anara, and Anara is going to step on up and take her place in the brand new nest. And I think since Isqui has had so many children of her own, all of her healthy little boys, and it is one of her most, like, strongest sons, I was going to say most beloved, but that sounded really rude. And because it is one of her strongest sons picking a new mate who has the proper cracker jaw and everything, I think that Isqui would be okay that Anara is taking over the nest. So we'll have to see what kind of baby we're going to have at our little squirrel family down here. All right, and we'll do a little bit more exploring over here. And I have learned my lesson. There's a there's a big cactus there. Oh no, and we lost Sukir's older brother Sakar. Oh, that's too bad. But I have learned my lesson. I definitely need to have a lot more exploring very early on um, in order to find all of the spots to gather up resources when you're on. <gasps> oh my gosh. Hello? Hi? How do you do? Oh my. D immunity. 
ram horns, spiky body, normal eyes, greed and violet eyes just showing up out of the blue like this. So we'll go ahead and invite you in, my friend. And now we just have a new male just popping up, popping up like that out of nowhere. And he's got really good strength too, huh? So we'll have him help clear this area a little bit, but I wonder what we're going to do with him. So you're quite the interesting fellow. Didn't expect that. Really didn't expect that all of a sudden. All right, so let's go ahead and have our last females who are expecting go ahead and get into the nest. Little Tanuku, Tanukui is going to step in there. And then his mom, Anakui, is going to, uh, I guess his name would be Tanuku is going to stand over there and Kui is having his very first son so we'll have to see if Kui's child will be born pretty healthy and possibly as handsome as he is so we'll line them up and then back here let's see yeah it's the final moments for Izumi and Kokoko so hopefully they will have a very peaceful passing we will leave little Rasi over here watching over her younger brother Taku and then we will have Vanku keeping an eye on his mate uh, just trying to make sure that she and Kokoko are comfortable in their final moments which is really sad but they're just also very old so it's kind of to be understood that this is the natural progression of things so let's go ahead we're going to say goodbye to Kokoko and Isri who have been such a loving example of cooperation and kindness in a tribe that has actually become exceptionally competitive compared to our last tribes. Goodbye ladies, I am going to miss you. Oh, and we'll always remember their legacy, especially with the beautiful white ram horns we have and the lessons of being a nest weaver that we learned from them. And then we have a very, very, very unexpected child <laughs> in Rasimi. Kui, what kind of genetics did you have hiding in there? We just had an underwater breathing baby born. We just had a child with gills and white ram horns born, and I'm not even sure what we're going to do with her. This is amazing. She has fishing and underwater breathing, born in the middle of the island, no less. She may actually end up taking over the lake. She may become the lady of the lake. That's pretty exciting. That is very exciting, actually. All right, and we do have another little one down here, and it is the very firstborn child of Nukui. It is a boy. His name is Von Von Ro. He is healthy, thank goodness. He's got good blood clotting. He's got normal eyesight. He doesn't have doubled up immunity, and he has digging paw and nimble fingers. He is a perfect squirrely son. I am very, very happy to have him added into the family, and we'll have Nukui go ahead and name his son. Uh, Von Von Ro, how about after, how about after their father? So, Tavon, Taqui. So, we're going to name him, do we have a Taqui already? Yes, we do have a Taqui already. And he is off, uh, that's the uncle, actually. So, let's go with, um, hmm, Tukui, Taqui? Uh, Taqui, you know what, It'll, he'll be named after his uncle and his father. So, ta kui. There we go, little guy. So, we have a perfect little squirrely son born. All right, wonderful. So, the tribe has done really wonderfully. I am so excited. I really have loved the nest trees, and we definitely will try to visit them again if I'm able to with the new update. I should be home after tomorrow, so you guys will be seeing a little bit more of the Janu tribe if everything went to plan. And then we will be jumping in to our jungle tribe, too. And I love how there's so many different stories that we get to tell every single tribe. It's always such a unique and amazing experience. So I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye-bye.